commonly a dirty or bad mass airflow sensor is believed to lead to a link condition. However, my experience is that it's more likely to lead to a rich condition at idle. In this video, I'll clean the MAF sensor in my W220 Mercedes S500 and compare the short and long-term fuel trim readings. First, let's look at uh, some data points before cleaning the MAF sensor. Keep in mind that uh, the engine had been warmed up, fuel mixture adaptation had not been reset, and uh, was very negative at idle. Here's a photo with the numbers taken days before this. We see that uh, the idle settled at 550 RPM immediately with an OK intake vacuum. However, the calculated engine load is abnormal. A V8 should not idle at 24% load. The air mass reading is also high. The expected value should be 16 kg per hour, which is uh, 5 grams per second, with 1 gram per second per liter being the rule of thumb for naturally aspirated engines over 2.5 liters. The MAF sensor uses two TTS25 pentalobe security screws to attach to the housing. Upon removal, it was immediately obvious that uh, the sensor was extremely dirty, as uh, you can see in the shot. You can also see that on the outside, there is a thermistor that measures the intake air temperature. Inside the hole, there is a hot film sensor that measures air mass. This setup is common for MAF sensors in the last three decades. I sprayed both with isopropyl alcohol generously and uh, used cotton sticks to rub them gently. I also pulled the cotton fibers partly off the sticks to clean the sides of the hot film. Before cleaning the MAF sensor, I replaced most vacuum hoses. There are just five of them on this engine. One in the back for actuating the EGR valve. Blocking the vacuum port off would delete the EGR without the need for any blocking plate. Uh, it can be disabled in DAS. Two in the front center of the intake manifold for the MAP sensor and for actuating the secondary air injection valves. Blocking the second one would uh, delete the secondary air injection system. One crossover hose connecting the two secondary air injection valves. Finally, one in the front bottom of the intake manifold for the intake switchover valve. This hose is critical for top end power as it shortens the intake geometry when the engine revs above 3,700 RPM. Longer intake paths gives higher velocity, which results in better fuel air mixing and uh, more torque. Shorter intake path prioritizes volume, which is more important for top end power. I have replaced all but this last hose. After cleaning the MAF sensor and seeing how dirty it was, I proceeded to replace the three seals up and downstream the MAF. From these pictures, you can clearly see that uh, the old seal between the air cleaner and uh, the MAF housing was leaking dusty air in. The bottommost seal was also very loose. The new seals are much tighter, requiring considerable force to seed properly. After cleaning the MAF sensor, I reset the fuel mixture adaptation. After running the car for about 50 kilometers, we can see the new readings here. Now the idle is slightly lower and uh, the engine load and air mass readings are also lower. While the 12 kilograms per hour reading is slightly low, the 16% load is much closer to expectation. A footnote here is that the calculated reading only displays in 4 kg per hour increments. This means it is closer to 12 than 16. The dot zero is uh, deceiving. Uh, reading lower than 16 is more or less okay since Mercedes's single overhead cam engines of this generation are known to have poor, uh, poorly flowing heads. After another 100 km drive, during which the engine felt more responsive than before, the transmission shifted better, and the fuel consumption dropped, let's look at the long-term fuel trim. We can see that 
the additive field trim stabilized at the under 5% positive for both banks. We also see that the multiplicative field trims were 2.7% and 2.2% positive for bank 1 and bank 2 respectively. This is much better long term field trims than the minus 25% at idle before cleaning. Also note that uh, we have 10% ethanol in the fuel here. The stoichiometric air fuel ratio for ethanol is 9 to 1. If my calculation is correct, this means that the long term fuel trim for an ECU tuned to run on 100% gasoline should be 3.43% positive.